Hello. So these are some of my philosophy books uh, from the section of my philosophy shelf. And interestingly enough, uh, this entire section is full of like really small books. It's an interesting observation. Uh, the first one is Lucretius, uh, The Nature of Things. For people who don't know, this book is written entirely in poems. Uh, it's an entirely poetic structure, and it's about uh, like the metaphysics of nature, I guess you could say. Uh, Protagoras and Mino, I haven't read this yet. Um, I believe it's just like a dialogue between characters written by Plato. Theory of Nothing. It's literally just trying to give like a, uh, a theory to the, the nature of nothingness. And I think it takes some kind of like philosophy of physics approach. Reference and consciousness. This is kind of like philosophy of mind slash cognitive science. Uh, I took quite a lot of notes here. It's an interesting book, especially if you're like a realist, if you believe in like realism, this is a good book to read. Philosophy of Language, a Contemporary Introduction. Uh, if you're going to take any like intro to Philosophy of Language, get like the uh, AP Matriarch Anthology. It's much better than this. This wasn't too bad. I got some cool ideas in here, but there's definitely a lot of important stuff missing, simply because it's a small book. William James, uh, Pragmatism. Definitely a fun little book to read. This book and his book on radical empiricism are very, very interesting books. Basic Teachings of the Great Philosophers. I bought this book literally like 15 years ago. Um, it was one of the very first philosophy books I ever read. Uh, it's quite old. Very interesting book. Anecdotes of the Cynics. Uh, cynicism is a quite interesting little philosophy of life or like approach to philosophy. And so I thought this was really cool. Elbow Room by Daniel Dennett. I got this when I was going through all the debates between like Sam Harris and Daniel Dennett. And <laughs> everybody hates Daniel Dennett's like um, pra pragmatism, like his compatibilism, where he thinks that free will is a practically useful concept. And so that's why we should use it. Um, Professional philosophers don't dislike him, but I find a lot of people do dislike him. But I agree with a lot of his arguments anyways. Uh, I think Sam Harris has really bad arguments, to be quite frank. And I think Dennett's kind of the winner of that uh, debate. But this is an interesting book as well. Schrodinger, What is Life? And I read this book, and I was really hyped up for it. I thought it was going to be much better than it was, and then I read it, and then I found out it's basically like an introduction to biochemistry, or like the philosophy behind uh, biochemistry, and like trying to understand humans in terms of biochemistry. It's more of an, a history book at this point, uh, or like a history of philosophy book at this point, than it is like some kind of groundbreaking um, philosophy book to read, or like, uh, yeah, it wasn't what I was. Uh, expecting it to be, let's just put it like that. Pragmatism. Um, this I got because I was writing my book and I wanted to hear some more nuanced conversations on pragmatism that you can't get from just everyday discussions with people. And I wasn't let down. There's actually some very good uh, writers in here. And I would say this is probably the best book on pragmatism, even more so than William James's. God Against the Gods. I think there's like five books that are worded like this. God Against the Gods, Odd Against the Odds, and then I think there's another one called Gods Against the God. Basically, this book tries to argue that the the biggest problem with um, religion is monotheism, because monotheism argues for a singular truth, whereas polytheism tolerates many truths. And while I do agree that mon like monotheism could be the source of intolerance. Um, the Romans definitely did demand um, like homage being paid to their gods. This is something they did when they basically took over like a neighboring city. And they would demand that you pay homage to their gods. So there is some intolerance with polytheism as well, but I do think that monotheism is more intolerant. Uh, against Method, this was actually a very, very interesting book. Um, the writing style is perhaps not that enjoyable, but uh, the ideas in here that there's like a sociology to science and that uh, there's no singular method and that you can find different methods 
uh, over generations that were used in science, and so therefore this idea that there's a singular scientific method is probably not a coherent idea. Uh, Aphorisms of Love and Hate, Friedrich Nietzsche. I haven't read this yet. Um, Aristotle's Rhetoric. Uh, this was actually, it's a basic book. The ideas in here are basic, but it's still a good book, and it's still worth reading. This is the image. The Philosophy of Curiosity. I haven't read this yet. I wanted to write something about curiosity, so I figured, well, I'll go and study something on curiosity. I hope it's not too esoteric. I feel like when the book title is really simple and it's in philosophy, it's even more esoteric. So we'll see what happens. Sounds. Uh, this is basically uh, taking a theory of perception, or making a theory of perception being sound-centric, whereas most uh, perception literature uh, is based on vision, or visual, or even touch. So this author wanted to have a sound-centric theory of perception, and basically it's just naive realism applied to uh, sound perception. And this person believes that sounds are like real objects in the environment. I think the book actually sucked. It was not that good. And the ideas were maybe a little interesting, but like the way they were presented is really bad. And I felt like the consequences of the ideas in this book were not that interesting as well. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil. I always mix this book title up with my, my favorite South Korean television show, which is Beyond Evil. It's a great television show, by the way. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil, Prelude to Philosophy of the Future. Um, basically, I mean, yeah, it's a Nietzsche book. It's just edgy. I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, nonsense. I have two of these books. I don't know if the other one's in this. It's the same uh, book, different editions. Really interesting book for understanding informal arguments and, and fallacies. Uh, I read this as a high school book, I think, and then I took a course in university. And uh, yeah, it's just like a book on informal arguments. Great Philosophers Who Failed at Love. This book is absolutely hilarious um, <laughs> because it like proves that uh, a lot of the philosophers lived up to the stereotypes that you would expect from a philosopher, right? Like someone who's really stuck in their head and can't relate to their emotions and is too rational. That's what a lot of this is. I think in this book also, I read that Schopenhauer uh, lived out the last 20, 20 years of his life living with a poodle. It's, it's just a fun little book to read. It will take you maybe like four hours to read, and maybe even less. This is just a practical... This, I think this is a guide to Spinoza. It's just basically clarifications um, on Spinoza's terms and, and his background and how his life influenced his philosophy. Phenomenology of Illness. This is actually a very good book. Uh, basically, it talks about... I mean, the title is actually very accurate, the phenomenology of illness. So, like, what are the subjective experiences of, of losing your uh, ability to walk every day, for example? And how is that a different kind of conscious experience, or set of conscious experiences as opposed to being able to walk every day? Or uh, having to live uh, by taking medication every morning? Or um, what is the concept that, you know how you experience free will? And how does that experience of free will change when your body becomes sick? It's stuff like this. Uh, it was actually a very interesting book, and I'm glad I read it, even though I don't agree with everything the author says. Why I am so wise. Uh, I don't think this is actually a book. Uh, I think this is just basically a publisher took out a bunch of little essays, or like aphorisms, from different Nietzsche books and put it into a single book. Eating animals, okay, this is basically a philosophy of uh, veganism, or vegetarianism, mostly veganism though. And it goes over different ethical arguments for why you shouldn't uh, eat animals. I don't eat animals, and I do it because of health reasons, not because of moral reasons. The Birth of Tragedy, I, I kind of understand this book, but I still don't because out of all the Nietzsche books out there, I need to reread this one. I read it like maybe 12 years ago now, by the way. So this book definitely is a lot more esoteric in its writing style. And I think you need a background in Greek um, theater to even understand a lot of this. But I believe the aim of the book is to characterize our own life 
a human life in the context of Greek theater. Free Will. This is the Sam Harris book on Free Will. Uh, I don't know why it came out so botched, or if my copy is just botched, I don't know. Um, I didn't like this book. Yeah, I didn't like this book. It, it's a really bad book. If you want to get any of his arguments on Free Will, I'd argue Waking Up is a better book. Waking Up is actually not bad of a book, but the Free Will book is pretty bad. Uh, Emerson, Nature and Other Essays. I have this problem with Emerson where I think I have a lot of overlap essays, simply because his books aren't titled properly, and publishers like to, again, pull out essays and put them into new books. Um, this is a, a good book, though. I enjoyed it. New Humankind's Best Days Lie Ahead. This is just a bunch of essays about optimism by people who are technically called the new optimists, but um, yeah, that's all it is. I haven't read it yet. The Art of a Wasted Day. This was a fun little book to read. Uh, it basically goes over like uh, how modern cultures view wasting time as a bad thing and how people like Michel de Montaigne arguably were actually wasting their time. Like when he was writing essays, what he was doing is like just sitting and thinking about life and, and wasting his time. Uh, it kind of tries to reframe the idea of, of wasting time. And it does it in a prose uh, way of writing. So she's going to like visit Michel de Montaigne's house or like these other writers uh, who also wrote essays. And she's writing about like how she's wasting her own time and she does it in a very fanciful way. She's like a prose writer. Plato, uh, Socrates' defense. I haven't read that yet. The Mystery of Consciousness. Um, John Searle might actually be one of my favorite philosophers of all time because he, he has a lot of good arguments. Like, he, you don't agree with him every time, but he has a good argument nonetheless, right? Like, it's a coherent argument. And his philosophy of language and philosophy of society stuff is really, really cool. But basically, this is a Daniel Dennett and, I believe, John Searle, actually. I don't know why it says only John Searle. I thought it was Daniel Dennett and Cyril. Anyways, including exchanges with Daniel Dennett and Chalmers, okay. This is gonna go over some of his ideas about consciousness. Like for example, I think he talks about um, the threshold theory where consciousness is a consequence of a neural uh, firing, like reaching a minimum threshold, and anything below a certain voltage can't reach consciousness. Talks about that idea. He doesn't like it, he disagrees with it. Theory and Reality, this is a philosophy of science book, like Introduction to Philosophy of, philosophy of Science, and I loved this book. It was very simple, it was very um, easy to understand. It does read more like a history book that, rather than the ideas themselves, but it's still very clearly written. And that's what's really good about it. Quantum Enigma, Physics Encounters, Consciousness. I have not read this yet. Uh, it's not like pseudoscience. There's actually... Um, a lot of in interesting discussions to have about uh, quantum uh, quantum sciences, we'll say, and how they relate to consciousness. And what that tells, about, tells us about consciousness, there's even a uh, Nobel Prize winner, Sir John Eccles, who helped found quantum biology, where they talk about like the mathematical mo modeling of the quantum behavior of synapses, and so on and so forth. An Inquiry to Human Understanding, David Hume. This is also, uh, this is probably his second best book. I would say his best book is uh, The Human Nature Book. Um, I think this book deals with miracles as well. And I think this book also deals with a little bit of pragmatism. I don't know if that's treaties. It's been so long. Probability of liberty and necessity. Basically just a bunch of essays on things he thought about. Philosophy of Mind. Uh, this is, I think, yeah, David Chalmers wrote this book, or put this together. Obviously, he didn't write everything. And it goes over all the important um, philosophy of mind essays. So, like, the nature of mental states, that's very important. It goes over functionalism. Uh, psychology and physical language, uh, Carnap, it's also very important. Uh, what's it? Mental causation. Um, many problems of mental causation. I actually haven't read this yet. So, this, yeah, a lot of important things in. And there, that's why I like getting textbooks put together by philosophers, because they're more like journals where it's 
all the important articles. Uh, mind design. I think there's two mind designs. I think there's mind design two and mind design one. Uh, basically, if you had to design a mind, that's what it goes over. It talks about philosophy of mind, neuroscience, psychology. Basically, I would argue that this is probably like the. Um, is this comes before cognitive science or after? Okay, this came after cognitive science. But I think mind design was c considered its own little field at some point. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting book. I, I read it in university. And the last one is a companion to the philosophy of language. Blackwell Companions to Philosophy. I have a few Blackwell books. I have the Companion to Cognitive Science. Basically, if you want a reference book, or if you want to commit to reading a really fat book, <laughs> you'll understand all the essential ideas inside of a field. That's why I like them. They're kind of like Oxford handbooks, but more introductory. Um, yeah. So that's that. Companion to Philosophy of Language. Oh, wait, no, that's not all my books. The Decision Book. This is a very generic, mainstream meme book that was in the philosophy slash self-help section. I have no clue why it's in my library, to be honest with you. Uh, the Non-Human Turn. I was looking for books on transhumanism, and I got this book, and lo and behold, it's written like in gobbledygook language. And very little of it is actually about transhumanism. It's actually more about like moving away from, um, that, what is that idea where humans can always conceive of the world in human psychology? I forget what it's called. Where you like, you project your psychology onto things. Anyways, that's what it's talking about, is having a non-human centric point of view. Beyond biocentrism, I think this is pseudoscience. Some people say the ideas are interesting. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Read it for yourself. It's like solipsism meets physics. That's all it really is. And I think the author thinks it's more radical and insightful than it actually is. Reminds me of someone who's like trying to be really deep and metaphysical and talking about the nature of reality and all of a sudden it comes off as cringy and edgy. That's kind of what that reminds me of. Jean Paul Sartre uh, between existentialism and Marxism. I have not read this yet. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. Uh, is there a duty to die? I did read this. I think I had food poisoning when I read this. <laughs> probably not. A, it was like the worst fever I ever had, too. Probably not a timely read. Um, this is actually a good book, simply because uh, what he does is takes a framework, like utilitarianism, or not utilitarianism. Well, no, a little bit of utilitarianism, but also um, the ontology. And extends it to something new, right? So like, as far as I can tell, not a single utilitarian or deontologist ever wrote about having a duty to die, right? So he's obviously extending it here. Hard work, yeah. That's why I like this book the most. I don't agree with everything in here, but there's definitely, this book will definitely make you question some things. Um, he comes up with some scenarios where it's like, shit, if I was in that scenario, I mean, I'm, there might be a duty for me to die. And then the last one is The Genealogy of Morals by Friedrich Nietzsche. So, those are some of my philosophy books. I think my next shelf will also be philosophy. And with that being said, choose.